Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about great code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick. I've heard that it's it, it, that it has been said that a 10x engineer with subpar te teammates and poor working conditions will produce a subpar software. Is it correct to say that great software is developed by great teams in a positive working environment? That's a tricky one. Um, I would say that if you're gonna bend my arm, then I say no. And I only say no because I need to raise my finger and explain why that is. You see, the thing about, or at least what I've seen and what I argue for, is that it's very difficult to determine exactly how much does your work environment affect the output of your work. Because there is a very nice saying that I like to, uh, to reference sometimes, that the boiling water that melts the ice cube also, also hardens the egg. And the basic core of that saying, I argue at the very least, is that it's not just the question of what environment, it's also who are you putting into that environment. And so I don't think anybody's going to deny that having nice tr nice co-workers and like a generally po positive attitude at work and so forth is uh, all things considered a good thing just that uh, just as I don't think anybody's going to argue with you know if you have all the time in the world you have nice stakeholders and you have all the necessary bells and whistles and the funding and everybody's just competent around you all the time that yeah on all average things are going to go better but what I argue to you is that regardless of if you have every advantage in terms of all these circumstances on your table if the people doing the work lack the talent to execute none of that is going to matter all that much and I think that that has been proven quite a few times where you have certain organizations or certain groups and so forth pour billions and billions and billions into something only to be outmaneuvered or like outshined by someone with less resources. I'm in no way saying that more resources isn't gonna help quite a lot but it's not as clear-cut as saying if you take a 10x developer put them in a really shitty team then they're gonna produce shitty code. The end result might be shittier that's also not a given. I'll give you an example of a few situations where this has happened. I'll give you my, like the thing that I argue for is the main thing that determines how well software, like how good the software actually becomes at the end of the day, re like regardless of the circumstances. But absolutely, more resources on average means that you have better like whatever right but it's not a given because as I like to say to my friends and all the people who are willing to listen it like if you have an incompetent person or you have an incompetent management like it, it doesn't matter how many, much money you throw at the problem you should think about that whenever you you know you do any any transaction whatever you have like as soon as you're gonna put your bet your money on someone or like vote for someone or whatever if the individual in question is incompetent no matter how much money you pour into that person they're just gonna throw it away imagine trying to make your like if you are a parent imagine making your uh, your five-year-old in charge of the 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 home budget well doesn't matter how much money you have most likely because the, the kid is gonna just throw it all on candy so it's uh, it, it's the same basic idea that I follow so sure you can have subpart teammates you can have all these sort of things right but the thing that I have always found which is that the, it, it if you have a star player in the software team it doesn't really matter all that much if the rest of the team is good or bad if because it depends a little bit on like to what extent are we talking about here because if you I, I've seen more than once and I have been in the situation guys where they t you take the right senior software developer and put them in charge of the team and they turn the whole team around as an individual 
and it's not just I this is literally I'm not joking now this has practically been my job main purpose uh, in uh, like the I'm not saying that I'm a star player per se but I'm saying that that is exactly what has happened where I've reached a point now where the companies that I've worked for they don't hire me or one of my coworkers I have worked with other people like myself which you know depending on your title it's going to be principal engineer or staff engineer or something like that where you literally like you, your your skill levels are not intended to just write software your skill level is intended to like to basically solve a complicated problem as i like to call them and a complicated problem is okay so you have a poorly performing team for example so how do you fix that well as i said I don't really need everybody in that team to be very talented to put in place all the checks and balances necessary to produce code. And I like to actually say that to my managers and so forth and my the people who have known me for a while now know that I, I can guarantee the quality of the software and I can guarantee the like the stability of the system and the future of the system and all that stuff. What I cannot guarantee is that the code being produced will be delivered in a readily fashion because that comes down to the talent of the developers themselves. That's the thing that makes the big difference. If you have a really, really good, and it's actually, I, people scream at, scream for this all the time. This is why I tell you guys about being really good with ans asking questions and being no more than a code monkey. You will find very quickly that for some teams, the most important thing isn't that you have like a 10x developer who can write more software it is that you have the right person who's taking in the requirements and understand how to ask all the right questions because your whole team is basically just a bunch of people who they don't know how to talk to stakeholders or how to figure out okay so what are you actually going to build there's tons of miscommunication and mismanagement and things like that due to the fact that the only thing that they really know how to do is to write the code and I've always said the same thing if you give me a star software of a 10xer I can get that person's talent to scale to the whole team I don't cannot promise how fast they're gonna deliver code because as I said we have said many times before even if you give me a junior software developer I can guarantee that the code is gonna be good because I only need the star play the star developer to do two things that person is in every single technical discussion when you're scoping out how the work is gonna be done like preparing stories these sorts of things right that's number one and the second thing is that they do every code review if you have those two things in place, there is no sane, like if, assuming that everything works as normal, like that it doesn't matter how good the other developers are because they will not get through the code review and they won't, the, if they don't measure up to what this person's expectations is. I'm not saying that this is an ideal scenario, but if you think about it, like I'm not sure if Linus Torvalds is still doing all the pull requests for the Linux kernel, but it's the same idea. Like you can take a really talented individual. It's probably going to be a pretty boring job to just do code reviews all the time, but it does work. And if they are always in like the designing phase where as you as I was saying if they really know what's going to be built how it has to work and they are able to write down all the requirements and stuff like that they basically bridge the fact that the other software developers don't really know how to do all these things and so the only thing that is left usually is that they actually have to type out the characters and that's of course a discussion of like how that's going to work but at the end of the day if you have teammates that can't even do that well then you don't really have a team you like, so we have to make some cut point where, where where do you draw the line for subpar teammates so what I want you to take away from this is that no I wouldn't say that it is necessarily the case that a 10x developer will be way down or like to not have like because as I said guys it, it really is great if you have all these things of course that is the ideal situation but I know for a fact that as long as you have a really talented software developer in the right place and has the, they have the authority and so forth to actually do these sorts of things so if they if you put the 10x developer in a situation where they have no influence and like they don't have any say or any power to 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 affect the work conditions within their team then absolutely then the, i mean you can't then you can definitely do nothing but just see the whole thing rot, right? But as I said, if you give them the necessary like authority within their role, usually that is going to be a tech lead and so forth. And they do have, it's not just the talent with the coding now, they do have an understanding of how to run a team efficiently and how to guarantee success for their project. And as I said, that's a little hint to you. It's not that easy, but the two main things is, as I said, if you can control 
the quality of the scoping so you actually know so that the, the really good developers are in all those technical discussions and knows how to des design the solution so they're in the designing phase and they're there when it's time to deliver in other words core reviews and all that sort of stuff and they're really good at those two parts of the de delivery and they know how to set up pipelines and all this sort of stuff then you can more or less guarantee that the software will always be of very good quality because as I said usually when things go really really shit is when subpar developers or subpar things creep into the de development process but those two steps are the most essential for a very experienced software developer to be involved in in order to guarantee success for the product it's not the whole story but it's a big part of it and as i said that sounds all well and good and i always tell my like my managers and so forth these days that that part I can guarantee that if we have the right person, it doesn't have to be me, it can be one of my coworkers or so forth, or like the people who are supposed to be doing this for a living basically. That part they can handle. The thing that they cannot do is to make the software developers that are working in the team faster, as I like to say. It doesn't matter if you have a hundred people, the software developers, and if, if none of them knows how to code, your code isn't going to come any faster. It is usually a, like down to how fast can they adopt these work practices and get on board with like how to do things and so forth and so forth. That's the thing that is going to determine how fast your software goes out the door. And I've been in situations, guys, where literally, as I said, I can guarantee that there are tests. I can guarantee that the code is working, that it has passed all the quality checks and stuff like that. But it's going to take months to get there because the person who is in this case is supposed to be a subpart person cannot do this without my help sometimes it gets to the point where I literally pair program the whole feature with the individual and in those situations what's usually the you know, what I do in those sorts of situation is and it's the same thing my coworkers do you talk to the manager and you say how long do you want this to continue because I can stop I can stop doing these things and the quality check and stuff like that and then they can go back to do whatever they want if that is what we want or you're going to have to give me someone who is able to meet the criteria faster. These things like and I would say that that goes for any leader whatever you're doing like if if you have the right leader they can more or less guarantee the output of things in terms of quality and so forth and so forth but they only have the people that they have to work with. Have a great day.